prayer and then our pastoral prayer. And as this is, we are celebrating World Communion today because I was out last week. Um, and as such, we will have our prayer uh, for our Lord's Prayer uh, later in our service. May we join together for prayer. that you give us to come together and to to rejoice in the wonderful blessing of your love which which shines down upon us we thank you O oh lord that we had that opportunity to lift our voices with those of our family with our congregation and with those who are beyond us because this is a day that is a one normally set aside for this worship activity so we pray, Father, that our voices may blend with the voices of all your people everywhere to give you praise and to give our thanks for all that you are doing and all that you are continuing to lead us into. We pray, Father, for the healings that have been lifted up, for the, for the gifts of renewal and gifts of strength. We thank you for the celebrations that are a part of our daily journeys and our, our journeys through life, always creating and making new new life uh, milestones to, to achieve, and we ask, Lord, Lord, that through these we might praise you. And we pray, Father, that you'll be with each everywhere who calls out upon your name to say, Lord, bring me the healing I need. Bring me the help I need. Give me hope as we look to each new day. Precious and loving God, we thank you for this time of worship for the chance to open up our lives before you and to be renewed and strengthened by your spirit. Come, we pray. Touch us with the assurance that our lives are being used by you and for your purposes in this world. And Lord, through it all, and in every way that we can, may our lives give praise and honor and glory to you. Father, we lift this as we make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our affirmation, I mean our, excuse me, our uh, invitation to confession and pardon is found on page 12 in your hymnal. Find the words up on the screen. And I invite you to stand as you are able as we do our confession, invitation, and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have we failed to be an obedient church. We, we have not done your will. will. We, we have broken your law. We, we have rebelled against, against your love. We, we have not loved our neighbors, neighbors. and we, we have, have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our affirmation of faith is number 881. It's the uh, historic confession, our Apostles' Creed. And I invite you to join us now as we affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat>
coming with us today in worship. And then you may be seated. Thanks to all who continue to support the mission and ministry of grace through your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. We have offering plates at the two main entrances here and invite you to leave there your gift for continuing this ministry and sustaining it as we go through these days. You make it possible for us to reach out with God's love to those in our communities and beyond. Thank you. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. 
honoring your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we've left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray. O oh Lord, open our ears and our hearts to understand how we are a part carrying out your plan. And I ask, Lord, that these, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. So what do you think? Does money buy happiness? There was a study published in 2010, and a pair of researchers put together data, and they, they put this um, idea out, and the idea was that up to, that, that money did indeed contribute to well-being, up to around the point of, in, in 2010 dollars, $70,000, today that'd be around $90,000. Somewhere in that neighborhood, your well-being sort of peaked. You didn't really necessarily get better, but you know, you were pretty much insured against not having good well-being. All right. Just recently, this year as a matter of fact, 2021, a researcher taking data from over a million people and what he did was he built an app and taking this app they recorded how they were feeling, what they were doing and things of that nature and how they felt about their, their activities and what they were doing. And recording this data and, and mashing it together in some ways that's known only to him, he said, you know, I think that really that, you know, as you increase wealth, it doesn't necessarily mean that your well-being gets to a point and peaks out and quits. You have the potential for well-being to increase as income increases. So it's not limited to 70 or 80 or $90,000 but you have the potential for it. Okay, you hear that word. You have the potential for it to increase as wealth increases. That just tells me that, you know, there's, there's no limit to it, but at that point, we, we kind of wonder, um, um, how, how does it get better? We don't know. Well, it seems that we come up to a, a real juxtaposition here because what does Jesus say? And Jesus says, and we'll bring this over here so that she doesn't have to chase me around. Jesus said at this particular point, he says, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. What are we being faced with here? Because what we've got is uh, two words. One of them says that, you know, uh, we, can, we can expect that there's a, a good deal of happiness 
in this life to come about because of having wealth. But Jesus says it's going to be very hard if you have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. So are we, are we taking our future happiness and setting it aside saying, I don't care about that so that I can have happiness now? Or am I taking this and saying that I'm going to work for both? Do I, do I set aside happiness now in order to have happiness then? Well, boy, um, choose, choose which door you want to walk through. But either one of them is going to be not exactly what you thought. So we question, what is Jesus actually saying? What is he teaching at this particular point? Because the message appears kind of convoluted. We're not, not quite sure where we're going. Well, we take this and then we look at his words. And he says, how hard it's going to be for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And, and the disciples look at him and say, then, then who can be saved? And he says, you know, it's, it's, it's not possible for, for us to save ourselves, but it is possible for God to do that. And we can, we can all benefit from what God can do. We get down to the end and he says, you know, uh, now, if you have, if you have wealth, if you have land and, and family and you have children and you have all these possessions, if you, if you give them up to follow me and for the sake of the gospel, well, then there's no one who does that who will not receive a hundredfold more in this life. Well, it seems like there's a, what, what are we saying then? Are we, are we letting go of riches only to get riches? Because it seems that that's the direction that he's taking us with his, with his teaching to the disciples this day. And we look at that and go, how does this work? Because it doesn't seem that you can say with one breath, it's going to be very hard for people to enter into the kingdom of heaven if they are wealthy and then say at the same time that you will be wealthy if you follow me. Oh boy. We are, we are going to have to struggle with this just a little bit because it doesn't seem to have an easy resolution. It doesn't seem to have an easy resolution. The thing that is true about following Jesus is that he doesn't call us according to what we have. He doesn't call us according to what we do. He doesn't come along and say, okay, if you follow me, then I'm going to give you a different direction for your life. I'm going to call you into ministry or into some service in the church. He doesn't say that. And I think many people get confused that somehow or another when I decide to follow Jesus that I'm going to take up a whole new occupation. And my occupation will be accomplishing God's purposes in some way that is different from what I normally do now. Well, it doesn't seem that, that Jesus is actually saying that. What seems to be coming through here is that deciding to follow Him deciding to give our lives to his service, deciding to, to set aside this, this me first, this me primary way of living, then allows us to be used by God in ways that benefit and help the church. We all have different skills and abilities. Some of us are teachers, that's awesome. Some of us are working in real estate. Some work in nuclear plants. Some have been all kinds of, of workers through our world. And as such, they have, they have contributed to this, this caring for others, helping others, making life a blessing and a benefit, something that, that we can all say thank you for. When we become Christians, when we decide to follow Jesus, Jesus doesn't say give up all of that. He says, instead, use that in a way that gives glory to me. Use that in a way that blesses other people. Use that in a way that helps them to experience my love for them. Well, see, that changes things just enough to be able to say that we don't want to live in such a way that says anybody can doubt whether or not we are Christians because of 
of what we say, what we do. Instead, what we say, what we do, giving it to God, then says that's going to is going to be used in such a way where God is glorified in all that I say and do. That's what I'm trying to do through this is to help others to experience God's love for them as well. Some of us are gifted with with the ability to to earn money and large sums of money. But that doesn't say that we're not useful to God in this way because the purposes of God, the mission and the ministry of God is accomplished by paying for the things that do ministry. You still have to have books. You still have to have Bibles. You still, in this case, have a place to, to join together in worship. You still keep the electricity turned on so the piano works and the microphones work and the lights all work. We keep all of these things in our budget so that when we go through and we say, how can I serve God? Giving is one of those ways. It's a matter of discipleship. It's a way of stewardship. It's using what God has given us to accomplish God's purposes. That's true whether you're a teacher or whether you are um, someone who is good with their hands, someone who cooks, someone who, who helps to care for little children. All of these things accomplish God's purposes. We have a way of blending them together and God puts together congregations of people who together are able to lift up God's name and accomplish God's purposes where that congregation is situated. When we accomplish it in that way, then we're able to help others to experience God's love too. That then requires we all work together and this combining of our efforts, our skills, our talents, our gifts, then enables us to be a unit of God's presence that's reaching out and helping people around us. That then says we are, we are the people of God. And Jesus is saying at this point, he says, you know, where you thought you were trying to accomplish this on your own, where you thought that you were working it in your way, let me show you that this is how God is working instead. I take your everyday walk around life and what you've committed to me and I'm going to use it, I'm going to see that it accomplishes my purposes in the places where you go. I'm going to see that it helps others to experience my love because it's going to pour through you. You can't, as a matter of, of, of action or a matter of words or thoughts, go against what I'm trying to do if you are saying, Lord, I am yours. I will work through you. I will put you in the places and I will help you to express my love in all these places and ways. Jesus says that if we, if we allow God to use it, then God's going to accomplish God's purposes. We don't have to worry whether we might be too rich. We're using it for God's glory. It's accomplishing God's purposes. We don't have to worry whether or not we are, we are honestly the best teachers in the world. Because when we use it for God's glory, it's going to be in the places where it accomplishes God's purpose of lifting children and older people, <laughs> welcome to our world, who, uh, who, who then experience this love of God in their life and as such seek to live their lives helping others to experience God's love too. Whatever our position whether we're retired or active, whether we're children or we are empty nesters or people with children at home, we still have uh, this opportunity for God to work in us and through us to accomplish God's purposes. And that's a great joy. No matter who we are, no matter where we live, no matter the situations of our life, God is working in us and through us to accomplish God's purposes. There's a joy in this. There's a blessing in this because combined together it gives glory to God and furthers God's kingdom in this world. We then participate in this kingdom so that others may know it too. Jesus in working with the disciples and working with the, as we've come to call him, the rich young man, sets before them this gift of the opportunity.
when we take this gift sincerely, when we open ourselves up to what God might do through us, when we lay it out and say, here God, this is all I've got, but I want you to have it all. I want you to take and use it however you can. In that particular moment, then God says, I'm going to do that and I will glorify my name through your life. And in glorifying my name, then we're all going to experience this kingdom of heaven. This kingdom where we all experience this, this love that flows and cares and shares my purposes in my way. What a joy that is and what an opportunity it is to. So I invite you to look at whatever you have, whatever your experience is, whatever your gift is. Some people, are the, I've seen some of the most marvelous crafting in the world and we see it as it comes to express itself here. People use their, their creative talents to create beauty and it adorns this place as well. And so I invite you to use all that you have, whatever it is, to accomplish God's purposes in and through your life. May it give glory to God and may all people come to know that this is God's love poured out through your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to join with me now in our great thanksgiving. As we prepare to celebrate this gift of communion. We have the cups and the uh, little wafers back there uh, on the table. And so if you are without one already, I invite you to to go and pick one up so that we have one as we begin our service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and all these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world, and strengthen it in every nation and among every people, to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now may we be so bold as to pray the prayer which he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 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 Am
Be steadfast in your faith and let all that you do be done in love. Amen.